This video is going to be a quick review of chirality and enantiomers. I'll go over the method I prefer for determining if a stereo sensor is R or S, which is probably a little bit different and hopefully simpler and easier than how you learn to do it. And as always, there are questions at the end, so let's do it. Okay, so just a really quick review to start off. Chirality is often likened to handedness, that is, if a molecule is chiral, it is non-superimposable on its mirror image. That's what enantiomers are by definition. There's no 3D orientation that you can rotate a chiral molecule such that it will match its mirror image. Just like there's no orientation you can put your left hand in that will make it match your right. Uh, if any of you would like to know what a difference a seemingly simple thing like 3D orientation can have, Google thalidomide, T-H-A-L-I-D-O-M-I-D-E. It was an antiemetic that caused horrible birth defect defects like stunted limbs or loss of them uh, when taken by the mother during pregnancy. The Wikipedia page is a pretty good summary. Okay, moving on with the review. So in order for a molecule to be chiral, a carbon must have four different substituents. The carbon is called a chiral carbon, it's also called a stereocenter. If any two of the substituents are the same, then there, it would not be chiral, because there would be a way to rotate the molecule to make it match its mirror image. So it has to have four distinct, unique substituents. The priority rules are exactly the same as priority rules for E and Z isomers of alkenes, and that the higher priority substituents are those that have higher atomic numbers closest to the chiral center. In this example, it's pretty clear that hydrogen will be the lowest priority, and the hydroxyl group will be the highest, as oxygen at 8 beats carbon at 6. But what about the methyl and propyl groups? Well, the thing to take away from this is that everything else being equal, longer alkyl chains take priority over shorter ones. Now, the reason behind this is that there are tie-breaking rules. They are both tied in that they both have a carbon attached to the chiral center. So then you have to move out from there. The methyl group has three hydrogens, whereas the propyl group has two hydrogens and one carbon. This carbon breaks the tie as it has a higher atomic number than the hydrogen on the methyl group. So knowing how ties are broken is useful in this next example. Again, the hydrogen is four, and it should be clear that the group on the right is three. But is the methoxy group number one, or is the hydroxyl group number one? Refer back to your tiebreakers, and it should follow that the methoxy group takes priority as carbon trumps hydrogen once again. Okay, now what? Now that we've assigned priority to each group, which should always be your first step, what do we do? Now we can determine if this is an R or S enantiomer. So, given that the lowest priority group is in the back, going into the page, which is a requirement, we can determine which enantiomer these are based off of which direction you have to go to get from the highest priority group to the second. If it's clockwise, it's R, and if it's counterclockwise, it's S. So the top example is R because we move to the right, clockwise. The bottom example is also R because we are still moving clockwise to get from one to two. You ignore the lowest priority group in the back when you do this step, by the way. Uh, and that's it. So, in both these examples, the lowest priority group was already in the back, already going into the page. So, what do you do if this is not the case, like in this example? Well, we need to rotate the molecule. If you used actual 3D models before to assist you in this, don't use them now. Uh, while they certainly help, when learning this, you don't get to use them on the MCAT, so you do need to learn to do this in your head and visualize things three-dimensionally. So, as always, start by assigning priority to the substituents. That's the first step. And that should give us something like this. As you can see, group four is coming out of the page, and we need it going into the page before determining if this molecule is R or S. So we need to rotate the molecule so that 4, the methyl group, is in the back. And the classic way of doing this means redrawing it. And to do that, we will spin it on the y-axis, 109.5 degrees. And it gives us something like this. 
you can see there's a lot of redrawing, it can take some time, it's, it can be rather error prone if you're not quite sure what you're doing, if you haven't practiced this enough, if you just neglected it because it's kind of a minor topic for the MCAT. But anyway, as you can see that to get from 1 to 2 we go clockwise, which means that this molecule is again R. I didn't intentionally make all the examples R up to this point, completely accidental. Uh, I promise there are some that will be asking the questions. Um, but as you can see, again, this method can take a bunch of time just because you're redrawing it. I had to double check this one myself just to make sure I had done it correctly. So I don't like this method. I don't like it at all. I prefer this one. It's a subtle difference, but I think it really helps and it's simple. So. Just imagine you are positioning yourself on whatever side of the molecule is necessary so that group 4 is in the back and you're looking down that bond, like this stick figure man is here. From his perspective, he sees group 3 at the top, that's unchanged, and the other groups have switched positions. The hydroxyl group, which appears from the head-on perspective, from our perspective, to be on the left, is now on the right, and the propyl group, which appears from the head-on perspective, to be on the right, is now on the left. If you still would like to draw, I'd suggest this triangle. It's effective, easy to use, and quick, which is nice. So it works just the same as before. You move from 1 to 2. And this confirms what we already confirmed with the previous method as it moves clockwise, so again, this is R. So certainly use whichever method works best for you. I just happen to prefer this one. Uh, there are a decent amount of practice questions, so you can use either to see which you're more partial to. So another big thing with chirality is finding chiral centers, stereocenters. This is cholesterol, and see if you can find all the stereocenters. So pause the video real quick if you'd like. Here they are. Cholesterol has eight. And a question that came up a lot in my studying, which I had never encountered before in my courses, was for a given molecule with N stereocenters, how many possible stereoisomers exist? And the answer to this is always 2 to the N. And this applies to all molecules. So that means that cholesterol has 2 to the 8th possible stereoisomers, or 256. Uh, so just remember that, 2 to the N. Now, determining stereoisomerism at the chiral centers for a molecule like cholesterol is about as complicated and difficult as it gets. One, it's a test of your priority knowledge, and two, not all the hydrogens are drawn for you. So let's practice this. Let's look at stereocenter 8 first. This is one where hydrogen isn't drawn for us, so we need to draw it in. Given that we know the hydroxyl group is coming out of the page, the hydrogen must be going in. So that means... No rotation or manipulation is needed, because that is clearly the lowest priority group, and it's already in the back. The hydroxyl group will get priority 1, the group moving counterclockwise from the stereocenter will get priority 2, and the group moving clockwise gets 3. So we draw our triangle thusly, and you can see that this stereocenter is S. Let's try another one. Let's look at stereocenter 7 now. No need to draw any hydrogens here, and the methyl group will take the lowest priority. Obviously the group to the left will be 3, but which group is 1? Both alpha carbons are connected to two others, but the double bond counts as if it's bonded to two carbons, so the group down gets priority 1. Now that we have that, pretend that you're on the other side of this molecule, just like the stick figure man, looking down the methyl group. That would give us group 1 down, group 2 to the left, and group 3 to the right, which gives us R. Can you imagine doing that if you had tried to redraw stuff so that the methyl group was in the back? Yeah, complicated. That's why I suggest this method. Now, I'm going to leave the rest of these for you to do, if you're so inclined. Again, this is about as hard as it gets in determining RRS, so pause the video now if you'd like to do the rest, or a few more. And here are the answers. And that's it for chirality. Here are some questions. 
Go ahead and pause the video while you work on them as the answer slide will appear in about five seconds, so pause it now. And here are the answers. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post in the comment section of this video and I'll get back to you.